So as the teams come on the field, though, this is Argentina. Number one in the black helmet on the left, Santiago, sorry, on the right, Santiago Sonades. Then uh, Marcus Saraja. Juan Ambrogio and Raul Laplacet. The USA team, Mason Rowe, Chris Campson, Jeff Hall and Mike Azaro. We'll introduce them separately when we come in. Our umpires for today are Cody Forsyth from New Zealand and Peter Wright from England. So two neutral umpires here. And uh, we'll now go ahead with the national anthem of the two First off, the national anthem for Argentina. the United States of America. So, two teams, Argentina in the light blue, the number one is Santiago Sonatas from Buenos Aires in Argentina. The number two is Marco Saraja. Number three, Juan Ambrosio from Santa Fe in Argentina. At the back, Raul Laplacet. And the number one for the United States. Played in the World Cup for team uh, in Argentina for the United States history. This is Mason Rowe from Texas. Chris Campson is the number two. He's from Florida. Number three. Is Jeff Hall, also a Texan. And the third one in the team is Mike Azaro from also from Texas. Mike Azaro was, uh, was put on the highest handicap possible for a player of 10 goals, and uh, he was on that for 13 years. Back to seven goals now. Our two arm tyres are Cody Forsyth in the black helmet and from New Zealand and Peter Wright from 
England. Jeff Hall there on screen, and this is Gustavo Martino, who is the ambassador to China for the Republic of Argentina. And he'll be accompanied by, well, he is accompanied there, uh, Senor Eduardo Juego, who is the chairman of the Federation International de Polo, the International Polo Federation, uh, and he is also from Argentina. So, players. Like a few of the United States players may have just gone back to check out something on their horses, but they're coming back on the field now. Argentina's all there and getting warmed up. This is going to be a great game. The uh, United States team is more inclined to um, <coughs> play a little defensively. You're very, very strong at the back. The Argentine natural uh, play is to spread the ball out the front and um, and run it hard. And so I think we're going to see a very interesting game of tactics as well as a great exhibition of horsemanship and stick work. The so Argentina on the left of your screen to start with. This is Mike Azaro, as I said, he was a 10 goaler for 13 years. Now back to seven, but still a, a, a lot of experience. He's played in the Argentine Open, he's won every major cup in the USA. A very experienced player, reads the game well. The Argentine team tends to be a younger group, but Juan Ambrosio is the most experienced in the team. He'll play in the, in the three position. And so, Martino, Gustavo Martino puts the ball and it goes out behind the Argentine line and straight off there's a whistle now where the ball bounces and starts to run that's the line of the ball and we'll see what the umpire said I think they said that probably that throw in really was difficult for the United States team to have a go at so they'll put it in and it's the number one's Mason Rowe his backhand shot not a lot of distance picked up there by um, Santi Sonatas and Sonatas drives it out to the neck now puts it down to about the 30 yard line coming through his La Placet Raul La Placet but he got the near side shot but couldn't get on he tucks it but he just goes wide of the post so no score results but Argentina as I said love to run that ball if they see it in front of them they like to hit it and get going so pressure on, here he goes now with the shot, but he just couldn't quite get that sharp angle. Uh, really, it's a very, very narrow goal when you get down that close. So from the back line, Mike Azaro hits the ball in for the USA. Goes under the neck from there, and he sharps it up now. now. Uh, Jeff Hall is running along the line there, but it's back there by Ambrosio. Ambrosio's shot goes up to Marcus Araja. Araja will take the ball down along the 30-yard line now. Trying to get a, a, a backhand there by Chris Camps. And turns it around for the USA, and here comes Mike Cazaro, but in comes Canardis for... And I think the umpires weren't happy with that one. So the, uh, the reason we have two umpires on the field is they basically decide to divide the field up into diagonal halves so they can watch each play from a different angle. Um, and then uh, they're able to decide who had the right of way, who was closest to the line of the ball, and who came in at an angle. So you just see here, Mike Cazaro coming through, and the player coming in there across his front, and then playing the backhand across the front of his horse. So that will be a free hit to the United States. And Mike Cazaro will take the hit for the United States. On the halfway line, a penalty 5B which is the centre of the field on the halfway line. So he's got about 150 yards or 150 metres to get it to the goalpost. He can either elect to do that or he can take a softer hit and try and bring it up closer. He's elected to go for the big one. He puts it out to the right of centre, but it's going to be picked up there by Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall coming through, but no, it's stolen there by Marcus Araja. Araja shot, but then in comes Azaro. And the umpires, once again, the whistle has blown. So, when you meet the ball, you must be exactly on the same line. So, 
He's turned up, come around and steals the ball. Well, the umpire's having a bit of a discussion. That's why there's two of them there. They're, uh, but they're happy to say. Now, what I think they've said is that the in turning his horse to get onto that line, he was on the line when he hit the ball, but when he turned his horse, the horse's head came across the, the line, and that can cause a horse coming down the line to check up. Um, or if you don't get the horse back in time, then you'll have a collision. So what they've said is, although he was, when he hit the ball, he got back in the right position. In the meantime, he'd come into that right of way when he turned the horse. So a 30-yard free hit, quite a, well, I don't say severe, but quite a, quite a, a an appropriate penalty, really, because the next shot should have been a goal. And it hits the post and runs off the post. And in comes Cesaro now and puts it up over the top. So I, I don't think that will count. The ball hits the post. I think the ball is then dead. It's outside the scoring area. So. Ah, but what's, what's happened is that, that one of the, the Argentine players have to stay behind the back line, behind the post. So the, the USA team will get another hit now on a technical foul. They're not allowed to cross the line until... On a third, no, you're not allowed to cross the line at all. So one of the Argentine players just drifting... Up, in comes Mike Azaro, puts it high in the air, and that's the first goal for a USA. So, um, US, USA 1 0. So, we'll come back to the centre um, after each goal is scored. The teams change. That's just in case there are any weather conditions like strong winds or, or uh, sleety rain um, that horses don't like running into. So, anybody with that weather behind them has a, a big advantage. No problem here today. There's hardly a breath of air, uh, hardly a breeze to stir the flags. And so poor Raul Lapa sets it. I don't care which way we're going. We're going to goal. He goes now. Sadi Bernardes. He takes it out towards the back line, out of the sideline. Tucks it under the pony's neck from there. Bounces off the boards. Next one to it is going to be Mason Rowe. Rowe's backhand shot. He's picked up there by... Well, there he was, Mike Zaro came through, picked up the next shot, took it on the near side, and he runs it down to about the 30-yard line, and he's got it aimed up at goal, and he pops it forward, and 10 fellas who've been on 10 goals don't make mistakes with those sort of ones. So, great play by Mike Zaro. Great anticipation, he picked the ball up off the sideboard, and, uh, and coming through now, and just didn't try to hit it too hard, just popped it over the line. So, two goals to the USA now in the first chucker. And Argentina are going to have to look to... Uh, looks like they're going to bring Mike Azaro up into the game a bit. The US tactics. Rather than him sitting deep and just playing defensively. And he's got a very, very good ball chaser in Jeff Hall in front of him. But off the back of the rock, it's Ambrosio for Argentina. And he brings it down the centre line now and pops it up in the air. It's gone to the left of the post, though. He'll have to go hard to get this one. And he does. That's a great goal for Juan Ambrosio. Uh, it was going to the left and he had a very difficult shot to get that through so that's a reply from Argentina very quickly, two goals to one the score now here he comes now, you just see his, that ball is heading left so he cuts it from under the pony's neck back through the goal, that's very clever stick work so Back to the centre. We'll change ends again. They're doing plenty of this. Three goals so far on this chucker, and we've only had about half of it. Six chuckers to go today. It bounces off the number two. Chris Campson can't quite pick it up. Out comes La Pacette. Raul La Pacette, uh, just bringing the ball round the corner. Now Ambrosio says, come on, I'll take this one. Very experienced player, as I said. He's very good at setting up an attack. So he puts it there now for La Placette. And the Argentina is now trying to work man-to-man. -man. And La Placette is left to hit the ball up through the 
ruck, but it doesn't get the distance he'd like. Mason Rowe comes in there, but it's just tapped out by Ambrosio. And two Argentinians going for the ball together there. Ambrosio gets the better of it, brings it around in front of goal. Hits a pony. Plenty of defence there. Backhand shot by Ambrosio. Takes it across to the right of goal. Picked up there by Mike Cazaro, and the whistle blows. So, um, we'll again just see if we can pick that up. The ball had been hit across the goal by Juan Ambrosio. And, uh, Mike Azaro, see him coming off the field now to change horses, I would imagine. As soon as they feel a horse is not responding, getting a bit tired, they will take it off and get a fresh pony. It's so important to this game, you can be the best polo player in the world without good horses. You can't show your worth. So a tired horse is very, very hard to hit off and they start to fall. And so, a penalty shot on the spot and it's taken by La Placette and through the goal it goes. So it's all square now. Two goals all in the first chucker. USA versus Argentina, the final of the Super Nations Cup 2012. So a penalty right in front of goal. So undefendable really. The ball goes in from Peter Wright. It's backed out by Ambrosio. He's doing a bit of damage now. He's getting a lot of possession out of these lineups, but it's turned around by Jeff Hall. Hall shot takes it up to um, La Placette. La Placette shot going up to Marcos Araja, and uh, Mike Zara was there. And we'll hear the whistle. We did hear the whistle. We'll see what the result of that is. So, Marcus Araja has dropped his whip, so he's getting a little bit of help from the umpire there to get it back. You see the, uh, the range of photographers and media that are here. It's very, very well covered this. Super Nations Cup, really putting China on the map as a polo destination. There have been about three other tournaments held during the uh, autumn uh, in Beijing and, uh, and Shanghai. So but this, uh, this is the highest polo, highest rated polo that we, you'll see in China at the moment. 24 goal handicap, Mike Azaro. Unloads the ball out to the right-hand side. La Placette is there to take it out to the sideline. He'll bounce it off the boards and get the next shot in, but the next shot takes it over the road, over the uh, boards, uh, into that roadway beside the field. So we'll see a throw-in about um, 60 yards out from the back line. USA on the attack again, but having built a two-goal lead, that's now... Even Stephen at two all. Whistle blows, so there must have been something going on in that line out, or they've just called time off to. That's what it looks like. The umpire's just asking to get a bit more organised. Umpire Cody Forsyth puts the ball in from the sideline. It's going to be picked up by Sandy Sanadas. He gets a near side shot. Backhand there from. I think it was Chris, but uh, well, another whistle, so this is tight stuff now. Both teams really watching one another carefully, and we're seeing quite a few fouls in this uh, latter part of the chucker. Just see it there on the replay, the, the player coming around, and he had to turn his horse across the line, and the Argentinian player had already got on to the line of that ball, so... So it'll be a penalty 5B from centre field to Argentina. Raul La Placette just placing the ball. Quite legal to do that because obviously these horses hooves do dig the ground up quite a bit. We've had polo on this ground every day now for five days. So there are a few divots and bumps in the field. And so 
So he just makes sure the ball's sitting up on a piece of good piece of grass to hit off. He'll go back nice and deep. Come in now for the penalty 5B from halfway. And he lets it go. Doesn't quite get the distance he'd like. It only gets to the 60-yard line. It's trapped there by Ambrosio, who hauled his horse back. And Chris Campson's come through quickly onto the line and ridden down. So again, we see a whistle. And I think this will send Argentina back into their defensive half. So you can see it there on the replay. Campson had really got his horse going quite fast. And when Araja came across to take that ball, he went in and out of the line, so. So, but not a very severe penalty. The uh, USA team right on the defensive there, so they get a hit on the spot, but that allows Mike Azara to take it up over the halfway line and put him into the attacking half. Now he'll try and straighten this ball up. But uh, Sadik Sanadis is there, picked up there by Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall coming through now, and uh, Mike Azaro takes a bit of opposition out of the way and leaves Jeff Hall with a bit of a clean run through the ruck, but picked up there by Ambrosio. Ambrosio plays the backhand shot, bounces off a pony, goes up in front of Pla Placet. Uh, oh, Ambrosio, it was anyway. It's backed in there by Santi Sanadis. Mike Azaro has got time to come around with this one. There's nobody close to him. And... Uh, well, the umpires blow the whistle again. Now, just you'll see there where Mike Azara was coming around with the ball on his stick side and two players coming in to uh, just watch it. Here comes Mike Azara, and he's been really knocked out of the way completely. Now, in that case, the, the Argentine player had to get out of the way. He was forcing the United States player into a, a, a fouling position. So the penalty is awarded against Argentina for pushing a player across the line. And Mike Azaro will take this, looks like a 40-yard free hit, penalty three. So in this case, the defending side has to stay behind the line until the ball is hit. So. So Mike Azaro to take this penalty hit for the United States. There's only about 10 seconds left in the chucker. And if he can put this one through to take it out to 3-2, that might be a pretty handy position for them getting into the second. So in comes Azaro now. Let's it go. And where's he's put it? It goes wide. So there's an opportunity missed for the United States. And... Argentina will breathe a sigh of relief. So, well, the first bell is rung and the umpires have decided to call that chucker. So, we'll see the second chucker commence with a hit in from the back line by Argentina. There's some of the the crowd that's come here from all over the world to uh, to watch this polo. We have representatives from most of the polo playing nations. So we're getting ready now to start the second chucker. Mark Cody Forthice on screen. He'll watch the 30-yard line. The defending players are not allowed to come over the 30, uh, any close than 30 yards from the man hitting the ball. And it will be Raul up. I said Jeff Hall there. Having, going over to have a chat with Mike Azaro. They'll probably work out where they think the defensive pattern needs to be. The hit man hitting in, of course, has three choices. To go straight up the field, take it out to the right on his stick side, or take it out to the left and try and find run the pass to somebody else running up from that end. So. so, Raul Laplacet comes in. He'll go to the right, but only with a tap shot to start with. That means he's going to try and draw 
a player and he's got Chris Campson close to him but he's not going to come there and be caught into that so he, he drives it forward Zara gives um, Araja a big bump and um, Chris Campson's horse trips on him but he still gets it around pretty quickly but these La Placette a little bit of time to play his backhand is trapped there by Ambrosio he was the one who did most of the damage in the centre here in that first chucker. Ambrosio's shot will come up to Marcus Araja and in comes Jeff Hall now he just taps the ball forward looks for Mike Zaro takes the ball over the halfway line pick Chris Campson's there backhand shot by Sonatis he's going to be trapped by Marcus Araja no it's not he's going to be hooked by Mike Gazzaro and we'll see what the umpires think about that one it's quite illegal to hook another player's stick providing it's not dangerous and that means you're not going to put it into the horse's legs and you're not going to do it above the shoulder and, uh, nothing wrong with the hook because it's USA have been awarded the penalty. There it is there, he hooked him, but I think I think they said that the reason he had to hook him is that he'd actually come across to play the shot on the stick side, which means his stick is down in front of the horse's legs. And so it should have been played. He should have gone across and played the shot on the near side or the left-hand side as you're going forward. And so a hit on the spot. Again, a penalty just occurring in the run of play. So but Mike Azaro has a chance to put America right down into the attack zone. So uh, he unloads, he's put it out to the right of the centre line, so it's going to take somebody with a big angled shot from here, but the first one to it is Raul La Placette for Argentina. He takes it right out to the sideline, that's the safest place to be. But Chris Camps has stolen this one now back for the United States, and he brings it around the corner. Argentina are always hard to weave through, and they're very quick to get their horses into the line and in the way, but Camps still takes possession. Plays a little backhand shot now, picked up by Mike Azaro. Azaro puts it out to... Uh, and uh, coming in there is Marco Saraja. Chris Campson was coming up the line. Whistle blows. Uh, again, we're seeing quite a lot of penalties here. This is very close, tight play. So there was Chris Campson. He turned up on that old line of the ball, all right. So. Marcus Araja coming in at really quite a sharp angle. So it will be a penalty two, which is from the 30-yard line. As I said, when Mike took one at the end of the last chucker, the defending side now can't come out over that back line. We saw a technical foul on that earlier, so the standing right back. Mike Azar just walks the horse in, leans out, puts it straight to through the middle. So there's another score to the United States. They go ahead by three goals to two now, and that, that's really quite an advantage. This is very, very tight penalties. It doesn't look like it's going to be a high-scoring game. It's going to be a very, very tight one. So a lead of one goal means that the Argentine team now have to play catch-up just to get them back on... Equal terms, Zara gets a, a backhand shot, but it's going to be picked up there by Ambrosio. Ambrosio shot up to La Placette. La Placette leaves it there now for Sonatis. Sonatis takes it back, and uh, no, he doesn't get hold of it, but Ambrosio sitting there watching. He's waiting, and he'll take the ball forward. Lovely, strong shot by Ambrosio, and up the front now, Sonatis has got to it too, but he's pushed it out to the right of the post. Mike Azaro is there, his backhand shot doesn't get a lot of distance. Marcos Araj has got it, but his pony treads on the ball. And finally coming through his Raul La Placette to put it through the goal. So, what is it? Oh no, it's Juan Ambrosio actually in the blue helmet. So, um, brings it back to all square. Three all now in the second chucker. We've still got plenty of time to go. Nearly four and a half minutes left of this chucker. Uh, Peter Wright puts the ball in. Off the back of it, it's once again Ambrosio. Plays the ball out towards the sideline. You can try and straighten it up from here. Wonderful control. Marcus Araja comes in and takes it around the corner. Bounces off a pony, goes out to the sideline. Backhand there. 
by Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall shot met by Juan Ambrosio. Ambrosio trying to bring the ball back into centre field, but he's in a big crowd there. Still keeps possession. Trying to tap it forward, and the umpires eventually blow the whistle. So, this is really very close stuff. That's why we're getting the penalties. You see these players, they get possession of the ball. They're not getting very much chance to really hit it very hard. Get them out of the... the uh, congested area, which is always around the line, I think. So here you see it here. Ambrosio's there. He, well... Uh, a couple of players actually being pushed across onto him. So that prevented him getting the shot. So now he gets a 30-yard penalty. And uh, this could put Argentina in front for the first time in this game. And, uh, USA getting two goals early. Then Argentina catching up. USA pushing out to 3-2. Argentina got the equaliser. And now here's a chance for them to push the score out to one in their favour. Again, the defending team won't try to do anything much about this. If he hits it straight enough, it's a certain goal. So, it looks like Marcus Araja is coming back to take the hit. Just takes it steadily, puts it through. So Argentina, four goals, USA three. So Peter Wright puts the ball in. It's dug out there by Chris Campson, but Raul Laplacette gets a shot at the ball, lofts the backhand right over the traffic there, but it's Mike Cazaro turns the ball around for the USA. Marcus Araja shot there, picked up by Jeff Hall. Hall just pushes the ball up over the halfway line. He's waiting to see if he can get some man coming through. There goes Chris Campson. That gives him a lead, and, um, and Mason Rose there as well. Now he just drives it up. Hasn't quite got the length on that one. Mike Cazaro coming through. But Ambrosio steals the ball, taps it forward. Now he's got Argentina on the attack, but um, there's plenty of uh, United States defence back there. Mason Rowe goes through. And now Jeff Hall waiting to see where the ball's coming. Marcus Araj has got it on the sideline. Now they're coming in to sort of help one another out, and Araja finally drives it through the ruck. And yes, yeah, so I got this pony motoring well. He's having a great chucker on this horse. And he puts it through, so Argentina now out to five goals to three. So and, uh, he's having a really good chucker on this bay horse, Marcus Arad. You watch it here, the speed he gets out of this horse to bring it through the ruck, and then it sits flat it's really, really nicely for him and gives him a great hitting platform. And, and it goes anyway, it's now back in play. They're not wasting any time. And Santiago Sonatas for Argentina has the ball, running it down the boards. He'll look for a backhand shot from here, I would think. No, he just felt to leave it there by Ambrosio. Take the man, said one. And uh, he's trying to get away from the hook. Bounces it off a pony. Comes in again now. He just dribbles the ball forward towards goal. This is looking dangerous for the USA, but first one to... Well, the whistle's gone here, so if uh, if it goes to the United States way, it's going to save them from an almost certain goal. And obviously, if it goes to Argentina, it is a certain goal. So Argentina just tapped the ball through. And so Argentina, Argentina out to six, and uh, USA three. So they've, uh, after struggling to catch up with them, Argentina now have doubled this USA score and lead them by three goals. So a bit of pressure on USA now. They need a couple of goals. They got those two quick ones early in the first chuck. I haven't looked like scoring much since. They've missed a couple of penalties. Jeff Hall. 
he'll take the ball forward, but there's a lot of traffic there, and Marcus Araja comes around and, and, and picks it up, and, and Mason Rowe was just riding down the, the old line there. Araja coming through. So this could be a chance for USA to get back on the attack. Jeff Hall who got that penalty but he's, he's a very experienced player he's, um, reads the play well very quick to turn his horses onto the line so USA free hit on the spot again not a severe penalty but you see Chris Campson heading Chris Camps is heading down the field, so that may be where Mike Azaro wants to get this second shot. Drives it forward, he hits a pony on the way through. Now he goes under the neck from there, straightens it up. It gets up to uh, Mason Rowe. Rowe, but um, dragging it around the corner there is Chris Camps, but it's gone over the back line, so it'll be a hit in from Argentina. So although America on the attack at last, not really getting down into that scoring zone. So, from the back line, Raul La Passet. And he brings it up the centre. Now he pushes out to the left-hand side, but Chris Camps has read that nicely. He'll go through with him. Ambrosio tries to help it on its way. Mike Azaro comes through and meets the ball. Now the first bell's run. There's 30 seconds left in the chucker. Azaro drives it up to the goal, and it's gone wide. So that'll end the second chucker. We're one-third the way through the game, and Argentina in a pretty handy position now. Six goals to three, with uh, America having to find an answer to this very solid attack, both Ambrosio and... and Araja having very good games in that second chucker, particularly uh, Araja scoring two goals off the field and uh, saw the replay there of that last shot of Mike Azaro's um, hard to get the angle on that and no score resulting so here at the Golden Metropolitan Polo Club in Tianjin, China we're a third of the way through the final of the Super Nations Cup for 2012 with the Argentinian side um, having had a resounding victory in the semi-finals. Now looking pretty solid. Um, they'd have to be shortening in their price as favourites, leading the USA by six goals to three with four chuckers to go. So the presentation area for the... Later on this afternoon, he's part of the crowd. A lot of kids out here because it's holidays. So, Raul Laplacet brings the ball in from the back line. It's up to Juan Ambrosio. Ambrosio drives it forward, lofts it nicely, puts it over the halfway line. Marcus Araj is out there, but so is Mike Azaro. And Azaro sends his backhand back, trapped there by uh, Campson coming through. And eventually he comes around the corner and gets the next shot at the ball. But these Argentinian... Argentinian defenders are doing a great job of spoiling that next shot. Hard to get any length on the ball when they do that. Marcus Araja gets a bit of length though on the near side backhand. Chris Campson now has to take it under the pony's tail from there. Can he find one of the blue shirts? Well, he can find a light blue one because it's Santi Sonatis who eventually gets this backhand shot to put Argentina back into the attacking half. Campson having to play a lot of defence from the two position here. Mike Azaro has come back to him now and he'll just keep possession of that ball now digs it out of a bit of a divot now he goes under the neck looking for Jeff Hall Jeff Hall's there too but so is that man Juan Ambrosio and he plays it off the centre Mason Rowe looks for it now he can see Sonatis coming up to him so he waits for the ball to hit the boards then he gets it on the near side Sonatis pinches it takes it forward but uh, he gets a big bump from Chris Campson now and they're all having a swing at it finally Marcus Araja gets hold of it. Jeff Hall goes with him, Pony treads on it, picked up there by Campson and Campson's shot takes it down to about the 60 yard line now and the backhand by Sonatis doesn't get a lot of length. Mason Rowe with the ball, brings it forward. Canardis gets in there and spoils it for him. So going across the field is Jeff Mason, Jeff Hall, Hall but um, it's, well, Araja tries to get it mid-air. Chris Campson now for the USA. Plays the ball down along the boards. 
bringing it up over to Willer, over the 30 yard line. It's a long way to go to goal from here, but can this man do it? Mike Azaro brings the ball right into the center of field. Now he can see the goal, um, but he had a man in the way there. That was Laplacette, but he comes through again now, and he'll put the ball, oh no, it's just gone wide. And I don't think he was too happy about that, but the umpires, I don't think, have blown anything. He, uh, he grabbed the ball out on the sideline, almost out on the sideline, and then bringing it in. So I think what's happened, I think what's happened here, if we look at this replay, the, that was the where uh, Laplacette brought the ball down on the ground, and in trying to stop that ball, actually, Santi Sanades has put his stick on the ball and knocked it over the back line. So that's a force ball. It's a penalty six from an own behind, and it will be Jeff Hall to take it now for the United States. The ball is taken back onto the 60-yard line, opposite the spot where it crossed the back line when hit by the defending player. Jeff Hall. Drives the ball down the centre, but he's gone wide, so the penalty hitting just not going their way. That's at least three they've missed now, and uh, that's the lead that Argentina have. Argentina, I think, have only missed one, but... Now, Raul Laplace. Ooh, he doesn't get his next shot in, but he'll come around in time. There's nobody there. Chris Campson comes in now, but that's what he didn't want to do, because if Laplace goes past him, that leaves a free man out the front, but he doesn't do that. Chris Campson's got him covered, so Sonatis goes in. Mike Azaro's not going to go in there just yet. He'll wait for him to hit it and then see if he can take him on the way through. It goes up to Marcus Araja. Araja's very accurate, but he's not accurate enough this time. He hits it out to the right, and it'll bounce over the back line for a behind. So USA still behind by three, but they'd be pretty happy now with... with Half the chuck and nearly gone. That um, that score has remained six goals to three. Mike Azaro hits across the goal this time. Just bringing the ball up over the 30-yard line. Nobody coming to him yet, so Mason Rowe can afford to go out in his own a little. La Placette waiting for him. Now, Mike Azaro, he's got away on his own here now. Suddenly, so Ambrosia has to come to him. Ambrosia comes up uh, to mark him. Mike Azaro's got the, the, the stick side there, and um, he just, well, well, Ambrosia can't come in there. Jeff Hall can. He takes the ball around Ambrosia. Mike Azaro's gone back to cover. Hard riding here, slowing the game down a little, but very, very tough stuff. Now, it's taken forward by Mike Azaro eventually. Backhand shot there by Laplace that takes it out towards the back line. Mike Azaro. He turns the ball back down to the 30-yard line. Turned around again by Sandy Sonatis. And he hits it off the boards. Marco Saraja turns and he's not happy with that. He's having something to say to umpire Peter Wright, but I'm sure Peter won't be intimidated. When the ball hits the boards, there is a new line established. And the first person to get closest to that new line uh, there you see it comes off the boards. That means the ball is going out towards Araja. All he could do was hit it and keep going on that line. The minute he turned off the line, he's then intimidated the player coming down. So what he had to do was hit it and then jump the boards, basically. So it's placed on the 40-yard line. USA with a chance here to pull his lead back to just two goals. And... I think it's Jeff Hall's going to take the free hit. He'll just walk his horse in, rolls the stick over and puts it wide. So that's just been the story of the day for them a bit. It's critical in these tough games to hit your penalties, and the USA have been not right on top of it. Argentina very accurate with theirs. So anyway, Argentina say, so that'll do us. We'll take it back into play. And they do. Marcos Araja leaves the ball now for Sadik Sanadis. 
Sonatis brings the ball up over the halfway line. Gets outside the boards, brings it back on the near side. Leaves it sitting there for Araja. Now diving in is Ambrosio. Ambrosio's ball high in the air but gone out to the right. So USA get another chance to push away from this defensive area. Uh, but with less than two minutes left in the chucker, they would love to see a couple of goals. They're down by three goals and... Um, Argentina doesn't score, and they don't. They'll still be down by three goals. So, And um, the hit in from Mike Azaro is eventually trapped by Ambrosio. He's got a long way to go to goal from here, so he'll have to take it up himself. Nobody up there to take a pass. The U USA defence sitting pretty deep. Eventually, Marcus Abraj is called off it by La Placette. La Placette drives the ball down through the traffic, but... It bounces off a pony and goes to the right. Ambrosio comes in to pick it up. Cuts the ball from under the pony's neck, but again, bounces off a horse and goes over the side. So. so umpire Cody Forsyth to put the ball in. Forty seconds left before the first bell. USA not able to get out of this corner. Well, finally, it's uh, Mike Azaro puts the ball forward. Mason Rowe's going to ride hard to this one. He's hooked out of it though by Sonatis, but in comes Azaro. Picks up what's left, takes it up over the halfway. Big lofted shot by Mike Azaro. He's running down towards goal. There's still a little bit of time left in the chucker if he can keep possession of it. Puts it high in the air. Where's it gone? think it's wide so the count of the ones that have gone behind without going through the goal will be interesting so there's only about four seconds left in the chucker will they get time to hit the ball in no the bell rings and the umpires call play that's half time now and uh, Argentina six USA three so Argentina not able to build on their score in that chucker but they certainly kept uh, the USA away from the goals or when they were at the goals, they were very, very hard ridden and uh, weren't getting clean shots. But, but uh, the USA may rue the fact that they've missed three or four penalties in a row. So, interesting situation at half time. Still anybody's game. The USA proved that they've got the ability to, uh, to score goals against Argentina and get around their defence early in the game. And then that, uh, that reply. So six goals to three, the score. So uh, we'll be back. Players coming back on the field now for the second half of this Super Nations Cup Final for 2012. The Argentine team in a pretty comfortable position, I would say. Certainly not certain, but um, they're leading USA by six goals to three, and they're back on the field having a bit of a hit-up now. I would think probably the USA have been sitting with their coaches and managers during the halftime break and trying to see if they can find a way to um, counter this strong attack. It's mostly being set up by... Um, Ambrosio and Araja in the centre, the three and the two, um, which is leaving Bernardi's um, a little bit of room to roam free up the front. And of course, La Placette just uh, staying back and playing defensively, not coming into the game too much. That's typical of the Argentine player. They try and trap the ball in the centre and then, and then bring it up the field as quickly as they can. The Americans relying very much on the experience of Mike Zaro to read the play and put himself in a in a position to uh, get possession of the ball and drive it up the field he and Jeff Hall have a very good combination going Chris Campson's doing a good job as is Mason up the front but they're not seeing a lot of clean ball up the front whereas Azaro and and uh, Sonatis are getting a few more breaks so and then the penalty shots too um, have just been a bit of a disappointment for the USA, I guess. They've missed about four or five. So the, um, then that has probably makes that difference of 6-3 all about penalties. And there have been quite a number of them in the game. It's, it's so very tight that it's very easy for players to come across. So play will commence where the ball went over the line to finish the third chucker. And it's brought in by Raoul. La Placette and 
Mason Rowe goes back to work him hard. La Placette lets the ball go. Up towards the boards. It's gone over, so we'll see a throw in. But that's got Argentina out of that defensive area. And brought them up nearly to the halfway line. Mike Azaro with the ball off the line out. And uh, it's trapped now by Marcus Araja. Araja just looking for the ball under his pony's tail. Can't find it. The umpires have blown the whistle because he turned when looking for the ball. So that's close to the halfway line. Be interested to see how far they go with this one. So it's going down to the 60. Argentina will get a free hit from the 60-yard line. Now those sort of... What they're saying is that if Araj had been allowed to take possession of that ball, he could have hit it at least down this far. So Argentina will get the next hit down in the attack zone. And so because it is a penalty, they'll give them a free hit into the attack zone. And from 60, of course, it's quite possible to, to score a goal. So, Raul La Placette facing the ball just on a good hitting spot. And he'll go back and take this hit for Argentina. They're leading by six goals to three. USA wouldn't like to see this. comes Raul Laplacet. And uh, well he walks in eventually the pony just propping on him. That's a fantastic shot from a 60. But it's not straight enough. So the horse just propped on him a little. He had to walk in and take it from a standstill and then it's hard to be accurate. So there's a big let off for the USA. So they can get back into this game now. Mike Azaro. They've managed to hold Argentina scoreless for um, about eight minutes now. And Mike Azaro just has trouble getting his stick in the right place, but the uh, whistle blows again. As I said, where there's not clean hits, ball gets caught up, and players think, oh, I must go in there and get that. But if they come in at an angle, anything that... Uh, could be intimidating, push another horse off the line or potentially a collision, then that's a penalty shot. So La Placette gets another shot at the ball. It's a hit on the spot, penalty five. Zara just makes some adjustments there, but he's okay now. So La Placette will take this one. Now this is a lot further than his last hit. This is probably 100 yards out. So he will look to see if he can get it lofted and straight this time, I would think. Yes, he does. He gets it lofted, but it's not straight. Well, it's straight out to the right, but it's not straight at the goal. So. Uh, another let off for the USA and there two penalties missed by Argentina so might be one of those days decided to catch up with the USA in that uh, part of the game so Mike Azaro very clever stick man brings the ball up now he's got rid of two of the defenders pushed them out of the game up the front and loads and he's looking for Chris Campson and Chris Campson's there takes it on the near side hard ridden by Marcus Araja but Campson can't come down for the backhand there turned around by La Placette La Placette's shot is going to be picked up by Ambrosio Ambrosio's shot uh, doesn't get all that ma distance and uh, Araja comes in Jeff Hall's there now for the USA Jeff Hall chops the ball forward bounces awkwardly keeps it on a string now he's taken out of the play there by, by 
um, Sonades and it's taken into centre field by Chris Campson. Campson appealing, umpires don't want to know about it, so Campson says, oh, I'd better hit the goal. And he tries to dribble it in. In comes Mike Azaro. Finally, there's a whistle. So not a lot of clean hitting here. These players are closely marking. It's, it's, it's very, very tight in the centre. And uh, we're getting a lot of, a lot of whistle. These players know that there's, there's so much experience with Mike Azaro and, and Juan Ambrosio on the field that if you allow anybody to get away with the ball, it's almost certainly going to be a massive loss of territory, if not a goal. So, But uh, if you give away a penalty in front of goal, then that's not um, extremely wise either. So Mike Azaro comes in. This is a hit on the spot, so he can dribble the ball. He doesn't have to hit it hard at the goal. And he takes the reaction. It's Jeff Hall who took it eventually. Jeffrey Hall puts the ball through to bring it back to two goals. The difference now, six goals to four. And that will put USA right back in this game. They know that with, uh, with um, over four minutes left in this chucker and uh, another two to go, that making up two goals really isn't a massive challenge at all, providing they can keep... Argentina away from scoring and they've managed to do that now for over a chucker and a half so now Ambrosio has the ball leaves it there for La Placette La Placette drives it down over the 60 yard line Ambrosio has read that beautifully he's out there on the stick side goes for it doesn't get it picked up by Chris Clampson and Campson shot takes it up Ooh, doesn't quite get to Mason Rowe but then turning in there is Marcos Araj and he has to play a close near side backhand shot which takes it out to the boards and away from the goal mouth so Ambrosio bringing the ball forward Juan Ambrosio trying to push in comes Campson Campson takes a backhand turned around eventually again by Mike Azaro but the whistle blows so as I said, it's just, this, this ball's hardly getting clear anywhere and players are having to come back into the ruck. And of course, when you do that, you're usually coming in from an angle. You see the ball sitting there, you think, I can hit that. Maybe you can, but maybe you don't have the right to. And that's what they've said about the United States this time because an open goal penalty will go to Argentina. So a chance for them to push their lead back to three. So, very, very tight polo. Neither team's able to score, to get a lot of scoring opportunities off the field, so they're having to try and win it on penalties. And Marcos Araja coming in now. The pony just pulls out of the can and trots up to the ball, so... I think the umpire said you have approached it. Waiting to see what's happened here. They've called it off. The, the penalty attempt. Maybe because there's a player off the field. Yes, it is. It's Chris Campson. He's down the bottom end there. So he's just gone off to make some adjustments to gear, so they're entitled to wait until he gets on the field. Even though, as I said, it's almost impossible to defend a 30-yard free hit. But if it does happen to hit the post or come into play, he'd like to be there to get back into it. So I'll wait until he's back on board. The Super Nations Cup played between four countries from four different continents. The Hong Kong, China from Asia, USA from North America, Argentina from South America, and England from Europe. Great job being done by the, the owners, staff, managers here at the Metropolitan Polo Club, just out of Tianjin in China, where this whole complex has been created in just a few, well, months really. It's, um, it's less than two years since this the first game was played here back in 2010. And you can see the massive amount of construction going on around this polo complex. So, Mark 
Akon Saraja comes in to take the free hit. Well, the pony trots, but that's still, he's going to get it through. So, no problem there. So, the score goes out to three goals. The difference again, Argentina 7, USA 4. Little over three minutes left in this fourth chucker. Two chuckers to go after that. So, United States, well, they got one goal. They would have liked to have been able to pull that lead back to one if they could, but not to be, so they started all over again. That's the first goal Argentina have scored in more than 10 minutes of play. So, umpires just blow time off to get the line out straight. Araja comes out of the ruck with the ball. Turned around there by Rowe. And picked up now by Chris Campson, but he's hooked out of the play. Laplacette turns the ball. Ambrosio. Just leaning out now. Looks to see who's coming from behind. Campson's going to come through and take Araja out. So, that'll leave Jeff Hall to take him up Ambrosio. Um, but he's successful in taking him off the, off the shot, but uh, doesn't get a shot at him himself. So back in the defence is Mike Azaro. Turns it up now for Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall reads Mike Azaro really well. They know where the ball is going. And in comes um, Sonatis. Sonatis' Son shot is a, a backhand shot. Gets a fair bit of length on it too. Picked up there though by Ambrosio. In comes Marcus Araja, and he's put it wide. So... so Accuracy is a real problem for these both these teams. And I said that maybe because they're having to rush their shots until there's so much pressure in the defence in this game. And here's Mike Azara. Now he gets a clean hit of the ball, no problem. Jeff Hall, no. He's going to have Marcus Araja all over him. There goes Jeff Hall, though, gets the shot, picked up by Azaro. Azaro drives into the ground and keeps it rolling forward. Takes it now on the near side. He's getting pumped by, by Sonatis, who takes him off the ball. In comes Ambrosio. Ambrosio leans out a long way and turns it under the pony's neck. Up comes Araja. Backhand shot there by Jeff Hall. Umpire's not happy. And that was at speed, so... That was a, a classic example of the angles we were talking about before. Where Marcus Araja had hit the ball and what the player coming to the ball has to think about is whether he's got room to come in on that line uh, without possibly causing a collision. And that's got a lot to do with how fast the player coming up the line is going. In that case, Marcus Araja was pretty much at full gallop. So you need a lot of space before you can go in there and play it. So we'll wait and see. The two umpires, of course, may not agree. Um, and the, the umpire who is judging it from the side may say, no, I, from where I was, there was enough room. If they don't, they'll call on the referee, the third man who's up in the stands here. And uh, he, but it is a free hit to Argentina. They did say that the um, USA player coming through cut across the line of Marcus Araja. So again, run a play, hit on the spot. Only loss of territory is the length of the penalty, but it allows Argentina to organise their attack. It also allows USA to organise their defence. So in some ways, it's an advantage either way. Anyway. Raul Lapasset plays the ball forward. Just tapping it now. He's waiting to see if Mason Rowe is going to come with him. Mason Rowe gets his pony in the way. Now Lapasset gets the next shot at him. Drives it down. And um, looking for the backhand shot here is Mike Zaro. His pony kicks the ball forward, so he said, I better take it this way. So he does. Puts it on the near side. Now puts it on the offside. Puts it high in the air. Brings the pony back. Looks to cut the ball around. Bounce it off the boards, takes it forward again. Just bringing it along the boards now. Great play by the former 10 goaler. Ambrosio comes around, two very experienced men on the ball now. Up comes Mason Rowe with the ball for the United States. It's backed out there by Araja. He's very, very quick when he gets anywhere near the ball. Sandy Sonades puts it off the boards. Jeff Hall coming through, so is Ambrosio. Ambrosio on the near side. Sonades on the near side, brings it up back to halfway. Now he's Argentina into the attacking half. And um, ooh, just he can't get the bouncing ball, and it bounces over the sideline halfway up his stick. So the whistle's blown, and Chris Campson is 
Wanting to uh, tighten his saddle up a little because it's slipping. He's a very tall man, so his center of gravity is pretty high. And uh, if he leans out to take a shot and the saddle is not tight, then uh, he'll find himself leaning a lot more than he expected. So So he'll get a fresh horse and I'll just go and uh, check on that gear. Jeff Hall and Mike Azara also taking the opportunity to get themselves some extra horse flesh. So this is turning out to be a long chucker. This game now been going for an hour and a half and we're just two thirds of the way through it. So 22 seconds left before the first bell rings. Then we may have another 30 seconds of play. So in it goes from umpire Peter Wright. Backed out on the near side, taken on the near side there by uh, Marcus Araja. Backhand by Mason Rowe is now off the boards, picked up by Chris Campion, and in comes Sadi Sonatis. And not sure where they will. See a replay of that, but if you will, you will see that he came in uh, in the way of Chris Campson's shot. You can't do that. You can only ride a man off on the other side, or you've got to be already riding with him. And once that happens, he's got to switch his stick to the stick side. So you can't come in and ride him off when, on his stick side when he's in the process of taking a shot. So United States get a penalty for 60-yard free hit. Mike Zaro's had um, one that hit the post, one that just twisted high in the air. So can he bring his record a bit better into line now with 15 seconds left in the chucker? Mike Zaro will go for this 60 penalty hit from 60 yards to see if he can make the score seven goals to five. Comes in quietly. Chestnut Pony is giving him a pretty good platform to hit on. Mike Azaro puts it through and it's gone wide. Well, no luck for them on the penalties at all, the USA. He, he hit it well enough, but... Um, well, the whistle's gone before the last few seconds have counted down, so... This may be another technical. I think the uh, one of the Argentinian players has come across the 30-yard line. You can see it's it's a very prominent line uh, right across the field, 30 yards out from play. And if one of the players comes across that line prior to the ball being hit, then that is also a foul, and a penalty is awarded a technical. So Mike Azaro has awarded another hit from 60 yards. The man with his experience, he'd be saying to himself now, I think I'm going to get one of these soon. Because he's known as a very good hitter of penalties. So again, the pony coming in nicely for him. This time he puts it in the air. There goes the disc up. So he has finally got that uh, fifth goal on the board. So we'll go into the fifth chucker with only two goals difference in this game. And... Um, and... Um, USA able to get two goals back in that chucker. Argentina only the one. Here he goes now, comes in and takes the shot and he puts it high in the air, gets a little bit of break on it and over the, uh, the line it goes, high in the air between the posts. So Mike Azaro brings his team right back into this now. USA five, Argentina seven. Pretty much to hold that uh, USA attack for the best part of two chuckers. USA getting back to it in the last couple though, so. 
So off the back, it's Mike Azaro, but uh, Marcus Araja, he's so quick to the ball, dives in and takes it himself. Now he'll go to the boards with this, bounce it off. He gets the next shot. Nobody can come down that line. But it uh, hits a pony's foot, picked up there by uh, Mason Rowe, but he's called to leave it there by Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall cuts the ball and uh, drops it down in front of goal. It's going to be uh, Ambrosio first to it. No, it's not. He hasn't picked it up. Araja's in there. So is Santi Sanades. And uh, player down and a whistle. So um, I think he's just been winded. Fortunately, he's moving, but... Mike Cazaro, I think, who's... No, it's Jeff Hall. He's come down. Let's just see what happens here. And he's crashed into his own man, actually. So, um, unfortunate one, so that's a pretty hard hit. So, unfortunate that in this very exciting game of polo, we've had uh, a man down. So we'll, uh, the paramedics will just check on he was moving, so hopefully. No, it, is, it is Mark, Mark Azara. He's down, so hopefully he's okay. there too and he just got bounced out he didn't I don't think he got kicked at all uh, hopefully it's just winded him but, uh, a vital vital cog in the wheel for this USA team so um, I doubt they've got a replacement we'd have to bring on another seven goaler So, concerned faces in the, that's the VIP box. Still about six and a half minutes to go in this chucker, so we only just started it. I mentioned before, that's why the rules of polo are so strictly adhered to, and why you do see a lot of penalties in some games, that um, if somebody loses concentration and just comes across the line and gets in, caught up with another horse, it can be... ...very rough. We're just to return once we uh, get some news on. Here's a great neck shot. And the little dribble that just went wide of the post. Mike Azaro digging the ball out of the boards and getting the foul. Chris Campson coming through now. His, uh, and this was Mason Rowe hooked out of the play but it was left sitting there for Mike Zaro and well that's good news he's on his feet and uh, great news actually uh, but he's probably a bit battered and bruised, so we'll just wait and see what the match officials decide. The Polo Operations Manager, Derek Reed in the uh, driver's seat of the buggy. 
will take him back off the field. So we'll just show you a few highlights until we get some news about uh, the continuation of this game. they'll have to substitute him with somebody of the same goal rating or less uh, they can come from any team as long as the other captains agree and I'm sure they will so I think they'll probably already be starting to chase up another seven goaler yep, yep. we're still on air Well, Fossi Marcazaro is on his feet. Um, we're just trying to get some news on uh, how badly he might have been injured, but um, he could have, uh, um, if he's cracked a rib or anything that they think might be serious, he obviously won't be allowed to be come back on the field. In that case, one of the other players from the tournament will be offered as a substitute from either the Hong Kong team or the England team. Um, some of them have actually gone home, so... Um, it may be that a player of lesser rating will have to be substituted. What you can't do is put one, obviously, of a higher rating in. Mike Azaro now playing off seven goals. So the replacement will have to be the rated seven goals or less. And he can um, uh, come in and play in place of Mike Azaro. So once we know what the score is with his condition and the... Availability of a substitute, we'll let you know. Unfortunate thing to happen, just uh, only about 10 minutes of polo left in this game. Well, 13 or 14 minutes, but. Um, and it was, um, it had got to a very, very exciting stage, but. Just looking at the shots down there, that there he might have um, got a cut to his head. But, uh, it's a question when he when he hit the ground whether he did any damage to his joints or his ribs, because he came down quite hard. He'd been absolutely bounced out of the saddle. see the horses involved in that no damage to them the man, Mike Cazaro, has had the fall.
So you see the scene there down at the players' rooms. See James Byme, one of the English players there. John Fisher from Hong Kong. But um, this looks like Mike Azara coming out to put his gloves back on, so that's good news. Great news. Mike Azara took a very heavy fall. Whatever damage was done, they appear to have patched up. The paramedics have cleared him as okay to get back on the horse. And so... Uh, So oh, he'll come back into it, and uh, he's a very, very uh, was it, experienced player, having been on 10 goals. He was on 10 goals by the time he was 25, um, which is not not many American players. We now see quite a lot of Argentinian players making it through to 10 goals, but not many American players get that far, and uh, he was there for 15 years until 1938. So. He's got a fresh horse. That one probably will get checked out. It's got a big bump. So we're in the fifth chucker. We've got six and a half minutes to go. It's seven goals to five in favour of Argentina. And I think we'll go down to the end of the field there and we'll see a throw in towards the sideline at the point the accident occurred. Um, loves playing for his country, Mike Azaro. Loves putting on that United States shirt, so it would have taken something pretty drastic to cause him not to come back on the field. <laughs> and obviously it wasn't drastic enough because here he is. So well done, Mike Azaro, and we'll shortly they line up down right down in the attacking end of the field from the USA point of view so 7-5 the score and Mike Azara just had practicing a few hits there and he seems to be okay not uh, can't obviously find any twinges he's got a big strap on his leg so obviously that got some damage i thought they were doing something to his head but he may have got a bit of a, a nosebleed or something from when he hit the ground anyway he's been past fit to play he wants to play so he's back on the field so umpire peter wright puts the ball in and comes out amongst the number twos backed out there by marcus araja araja shot picked up by ambrosia Ambrosio shot and the whistle blows. So we'll just see again now. Araja's backhand shot was heading out towards the sideline. Ambrosio seemed appeared to have room to make that shot. Let's see. Well, no, he turned the pony when he was coming through. And and often you do that on a near side backhand, you pull the pony's head across and and um, a man coming up the line, um, you've got to keep out of his way. So it'll go back for a penalty three, a hit from 40 yards. Jeff Hall just teeing it up. Whether Mike Azar will take the hit or Jeff. Probably Jeff Hall, I think, because he would be teeing it up in the position he likes to take a penalty. Some players like to use a used ball because it has a couple of flatter surfaces on it. Polo balls originally made from willow, the root of the willow tree, and turned on a lathe, but now they're mostly synthetic composite. About the same weight as a wooden one. So... Jeff Hall is not going to canter in. He's going to walk into this, looks up, plays the ball forward. This one's going through. That's a good penalty for them. So seven goals to six to score now. And uh, 
USA getting down to that attack and they've, um, they've managed to convert into a goal this time. So this becomes an interesting game now. Seven goals to six. One goal is uh, certainly not enough for Argentina to think that they can play negatively at all. Not in their nature to do so anyway, but it will be Chris Campson takes the ball for USA, backs it. Picked up there by Mike Zaro. Zaro's called to leave it by Jeff Hall, who drives it through. Looking now for his number one, Mason Rowe. Not going to get to him. In comes um, La Mike Zaro and, um, and Raul Laplacette. But um, that's an interesting bump going on. Anyway, finally, once again, Zaro gets the backhand shot. Turned around there by Araja. Araja's shot covered by... Ambrosio. Ambrosio's backhand picked up by La Placette. La Placette takes it out towards the sideline. Now, Sandy Sedanis is going to bring the ball up along the line. Now he pushes the player out of the way. Leaves it there for La Placette to try and set things up. They're setting it down a bit now. Goes up along the right-hand side of the field. Next to it is going to be Sonatas. Sonatas goes on the near side, can't get it. Backhand shot there by Mike Azaro. Pops the ball up in front of La Placette. He's hooked out of the play, though. So, next one to it is Ambrosio. He goes right around, but it's left there for Araja. Araja coming through now, beats the hook. Brings it down towards the goal. Just looking dangerous for the USA, but he doesn't quite get the shot here. Backed out there by Chris Campson. Campson takes it forward. It bounces off a pony, goes out towards the side once again. Mike Azaro's in there, but finally stolen by Araja. Araja's shot is covered by Jeff Hall, who hits the ball on the near side, goes to the back line. That might be a penalty six. So, the ball going over the back line by the defending player. We had an example of that earlier in the day, but this time it's way out to the right. So the Argentine side will get a free hit at 60 yards, but it's it's a long way out to the left, so I've probably increased it from 60 yards to maybe 75 or 80 yards in a direct line, and also the goals from that angle look quite a bit narrower. So, and the La Placette, it's got two balls on the ground there, so pick the one he wants. He and Ambrosio having a bit of a discussion. Well, there'll probably be, um, we'll wait and see, but I see um, Marcus Araj has taken the right-hand post, I think. No, he's going across the left. So uh, what they'll try and do is trap the ball. If it looks like it's going out to the side, those two players can camp on the goal post and try and trap it. The defending side can come out through the goal mouth. So... He's got 16 ponies legs and four polo sticks to get it past, so putting it in the air makes sense. It's a beautiful still day today, so not a lot of wind. So probably lofting the ball makes sense, but from out there, um, it's hard to keep it uh, really going straight once it spins and gets in the air. But he's put it up. Oh, he's got a bit of height on it, but it's gone to the right. So, so USA breathe the sigh of relief, and they will hit in from the back line. One goal the difference, 7-6 to Argentina. We've still got half this chucker to go and then another one. So, Mike Azaro puts the ball out towards the sideline. Campson, Chris Campson comes in. Doesn't quite get the shot he'd like there, so it's left there for Marcus Araja to steal the ball for Argentina. He takes it down, but he uh, doesn't get the next shot in. Picked up by Ambrosio. Ambrosio's shot there up to Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall can't get it, but uh, but Mason can. Mason Rowe can, and um, finally Chris Campson belts it out over the sideline because he'd like to see his teammates get back together in one place. So Chris Campson puts the ball in its trapped by Jeff Hall. Oh, wait a minute, there's been a, there's another ball on the ground. There's some um, umpires are blowing the whistle anyway. Wait and see what they're... And um, umpire Cody Forthy is coming in there and uh, I think laying down the law a bit on... The players are not actually allowed to talk back to the umpire. They've got to accept the decision.
So the ball's being lined up. Um, Mike Azara noticing that there was still that extra ball on the field over on the sideline. So Cody Forsyth says, no, we're out of it on the field. I'll go and get it. And then we'll see a throw in towards the sideline. So there's no penalty being awarded. The players have called up play. Maybe, I'm not sure what the exact reason for that is. Maybe they couldn't agree that a penalty had occurred or maybe it's because there were two balls on the field. But anyway, it's um, no territorial advantage, but Argentina eventually getting possession. Now the whistle blows for a penalty. And it's been the story of this game. Because these teams marking one another so close, the minute anybody seems to get possession of the ball and go start moving up the field, a man clamps on him. So... Argentina and trying to push that ball down towards the goal. Looks like they've come across the line. A penalty five hit on the spot. Argentina have to go back 30 yards. USA can set their forward players up. Campson's coming out to the left. And Mike Azaro takes it uh, out. Sorry, uh, out to the right. Mike Azaro takes it to the left. Jeff Hall tries to push it forward. Araja's backhand shot curls it under the pony's tail. Hall's coming up now. He's the next one to it. No, Santardi's, uh, Sedanis gets it, but picked up by Chris Campson. Campson, long, strong shot now. Now, Mason Rowe gets the pony going now. Gets two or three next clear. All he doesn't get the, the angle he'd like on that one. He hits it straight down the field. It goes over the back line, and that's a let off for Argentina. So USA back on the attack, the training by a goal. Argentina seven, USA six. So Juan Ambrosio just comes in, marks the line. He's gone left. La Placette goes right. Marcos Araya, Raja's out to the right, but he will watch the ball go over the sideline. So still Argentina in the defensive zone. In it goes. Whistle blows. So, we'll just I think Argentina pretty confident about the way that one's going. Coming off as um, those throw-ins, line-outs. Ball comes out. We'll just wait and see here now. It's turned. Mike Azara gets the ball, but it bounces awkwardly now. And he's turned again into the face of the other players coming through on the old line. And that's not allowed. So it's a penalty five hit on the spot. Again, it's not, uh, it wasn't one at speed or in a very dangerous situation, but it is quite obviously turning his horse across the old line of the ball. And... Argentina get a free hit from just on the 60-yard line. So they've got about uh, 140 yards to go to get to the other goal. So, Raul Laplacette takes the hit in, brings it down over the halfway line right up to... Marcos Saraja, but he's called to leave it now by Ambrosio, who now Lapaset gives him a nice lead into goal. Ambrosio brings it up for him, but coming across there was Mason Rowe, and he kept Lapaset out of the way, watched the ball roll over the back line. So still no score. And I said very close marking, nobody getting these hits around the goal that um, you'd normally see. There's a player out there marking the whole time. The back end of both of these teams has been very, very sound in defence. So, Mike Azaro brings the ball up over the 30-yard line, up over the 40-yard mark. And just keeping it going up to the 60. Another little tap shot now. It looks like Santi Sedanis. Sedanis is going to Come in, so Mike Azar will take him out of the way. Jeff Hall's shot doesn't go where he likes. But, um, and, well, that's going to be an interesting one. Jeff Hall turned. La Placette was coming down what he perceived to be the old line. If the umpires agree, that will be a hit to Argentina. They 
don't. They don't agree that it was Argentina who had the line. It's uh, Jeff Hall turned his pony quickly, got onto the line, and then came in and got pushed off by La Placette, and they said he was coming in at an angle. But Seven, six, fifth chucker, 50 seconds left when he hits this ball. There it goes, down the field. Goes over the 60 yard line now, back in defense. La Placette will just tickle a backhand into center field. It's up to one Ambrosio who reads it beautifully. Jeff Hall will try and go through with him. Um, Ambrosio's got a bit of speed up, so is Sonatas up the front. Mike Azaro's read the defensive pattern and he's got uh, Sonatas pretty well covered. He, he pops the ball over the sideline. No, doesn't it? Bounces back in, hits the board. So Marcus Araja now with possession of the ball out on the right-hand side. Goes down for the near side shot. See how closely this is playing. There's six players all within almost hitting distance of this ball. Up to Jeff Hall. Jeff Hall hooked out of it, taken there by Laplacette. Laplacette shot met there by, uh, well, it hits opponents, but now picked up by Mike Azaro. Mike Azaro shot up to uh, Santi. Bernardes, Bernardes tries to play the ball forward. There goes the bell. 30 seconds left if they can keep this ball alive. La Placette drives the ball down towards the goal. This is looking as if it's going to go wide, and it does. And so it remains at the end of the fifth chucker. Just one goal, the difference. What a final we're seeing here of the Super Nations Cup 2012. Argentina 7. Look at this shot here from La Placette. He looked to have the angle right and seemed to be drifting to the post, and then it just slowed down and lost its momentum and went out to the right. So and look at the horses. They've sweated up here. So they've had to do a lot of work. So, USA 6, Argentina 7, in a, in a classic 24-goal tussle. Very, very exciting polo. This is Mike Azaro back on the field with his bandaged leg. So, in it comes now, and Mike Azaro turning up into the centre field now, trying to bring the ball away from this danger area, and he's done it beautifully. Big, strong shot up over the halfway line, and here's Mason Rowe for the USA on the near side. His last attempted goal, he wasn't able to get it straightened up, but he's got this one, and it's all square early in the sixth chucker. Seven goals each. Oh, have we got a final coming up now. Super Nations Cup 2012. And uh, look at this. Jeff Hall, he's very, very accurate. Uh, uh, sorry, Mason Rowe uh, is very, very accurate. As I said, he played in the World Cup for uh, America in Argentina last year. And so Argentina get possession from the line at Ambrosio. Turns it up. You can't ever rest on your laurels with these boys. It's picked up by Sonades and in front of La Placette. Oh, taken away by Lowe. Oh, I think did that get over the line. The umpire says yes, the uh, goal umpire has waved the flag. It was very, well, wait a minute, there's been a whistle, I think. So, let's just see from the replay. That ball was tapped forward there, but it was taken out by, and it actually got over the line by Chris. So, and the, so I don't know what the whistle was there for. Maybe just to call time off while they checked with the goal umpire. So the goal is good. The television replay showed that. So it, um, it's eight goals to seven now. Argentina versus USA. I think the umpires just blew time off while they were checking with the goal umpire. And he was confident it has gone over the line. He was, and he was right. So with... Just a minute 20 gone in this chucker. Five minutes 40 to go. Both teams have scored, so that means Argentina hang on to their one goal lead. Off the back of the ruck, Mason Rowe. Looks like he's enjoying the game on this grey pony. Lofts it forward now. At the back there is Sadi. Sonatas, Sonatas backhand shot. Nice, uh, strong shot. But Mike Azaro just drops the ball on the ground, stops it. Turns up now to wait for La Placette to come through. He'll look to take him out. 
in goes um, a backhand shot there by Mike Azaro is up to Mason Rowe. No, yes it is. Mason Rowe gets hold of it. Marcos Araja has read that nicely. He'll just look over his shoulder, see where the his supporting players are going, and there's none of them there. There's nobody up front. He'll have to take it through himself. No, he'll leave it now for Santi Sardanis. And Sonali's backhand shot, uh, forehand shot takes it up for Mike to play a backhand. Mike Azaro's backhand is trapped by Ambrosio. Chris Campson trying to get in the way, but without fouling. Jeff Hall's doing the same. Finally, La Placette's shot hits a pony. Jeff Hall knocks it onto a new line. La Placette can't pick it up. Jeff Hall's got the USA on the attacking mode. Turned around though, and Ambrugio's very quick to these balls. And he was on his own there, so Mike Azaro has to hit the backhand into centre field. Ambrugio, he'll get it now on the near side. Takes it forward to give himself a bit of room. Going to go across the field with it. Gets a big bump from Jeff Hall, but... Uh, it, he goes across field, he'll bounce it off the boards way out there, and all the blue shirts coming back to defend now. One man off the field, so USA just got a slight advantage for a minute. Mason Rowe brings it forward, then following through, it's Chris Camps, and he takes it down towards the corner. Right into the corner, backhand there by La Placette, and now it's Ambrosio coming with the ball. He picks up the pass, but the South uh, uh, USA are back there in defence. Now Jeff Hall, backhand, doesn't get the length he'd like on that one. Picked up by two well, light blue shirts, go for it. Marcus Araja has got the better of it. He takes it up over the halfway line. That, um, Mason Rowe does a great job on Raja, but takes him off the ball, gets the backhand in. Santi Sanades has to turn up now, bangs it off the centre line, out towards the side. It's going to be picked up there <laughs> by... Jeff Hall turns it around now up to the sideline, up to the halfway line. Chris Campson just taps it. Now turns it now is Sonatas. Sonatas helped on its way by um, Araja now incoming as Ambrosio and the umpires are not saying anything about that and he'll run it down wide. It goes wide. Well, there was the man who earlier in the game couldn't couldn't make a mistake really, he was this, but they're under so much pressure now. So much pressure for fouls, so much pressure to score goals, and so a big let off there for the USA. But the whistle blows before he's saying they're not ready, I think Chris Campson is off the field. So, But that ball just drifting out to the left. He'd do that a hundred times a year and he probably only misses two. And this happens to be one of them in the Super Nations Cup in 2012. But tough stuff now. This is really, really tight play. Both teams absolutely playing their hearts out, and um, they must be feeling a little. It's quite warm out there. Um, and although Argentina's just come through a winter, a lot of these players play all around the world anyway, so. They're used to changes in climate. Chris Campson, uh, something he's not happy with with the horse, so he's just asked for a spare to come on. And, uh, eight goals to seven, the score. You see Mason Rowe and... Marcos Araja. Hard to lead. Sandy Sanades just leans out to try and dig that ball away. Look how far out of the saddle he gets to get that thing. Has to get back in and straighten the horse up. Getting possession for Argentina. This is Araja. So Chris Campson's got a new horse, and he'll head out. He'll have uh, go back and cover for Mike Azaro. He's just having gone back to have a talk to his captain. Where do you want me, sir? Mike Zara has given him his instructions and they will now 
hit in from the back line. Mike Azzaro. So he's got Chris Campson's gone up the centre. That's where Mike Azzaro's going to hit it. And it goes up and Jeff Hall's the first one to it. For the USA, he takes it over the halfway line now. And looking for it, now it's um, La Placette bangs the near side backhand, almost back to the halfway line, picked up there by Ambrugio. Ambrugio's driving forward shot, and look at Sandy Sonatas, the perfect one position, ball bounces awkwardly, backhand shot there by Mike Azzaro, and what an eye he's got at speed. And uh, Jeff Hall trying to tap it, there's two players pushing him around, we'll wait and see what the umpires say. That's what this game's been like. No, but it's, it's, um, it's like a, a game of rugby. As soon as the ball goes dead or goes, um, sorry, stops moving fast, players coming in from all directions trying to get possession. And inevitably, somebody's going to foul in those cases because you're going round and round in circles. So I think the decision there was that Jeff Hall was trying to bring the ball around. He tapped it and the, uh, the Argentine player squeezed his teammate on top of him so a hit on the spot's been awarded to the united states mike azara eight goals to seven usa have to get down on the attack they've got no choice but to try and hit goals here and um, argentina be just happy if they can stop them doing it and get back up into that attacking zone themselves but the goal's not so important it's just stopping the usa from scoring one so there goes Sandy Sanades doing a bit of a defensive play out towards the boards. Now he goes under the net, tries to straighten it up. It's going to be Marcus Araja. Araja takes the ball up, um, but it bounces. And um, Now a backhand by Jeff Hall. Hits, uh, goes into a pony. Picked up there by La Placette. La Placette's shot is gone <coughs> out onto the right-hand side. Excuse me. And... Uh, He's going to get round Mike Azzaro. He plays it on the near side. This one has gone through. And with a minute 26, it, I think you'd have to say the odds are shortening for Argentina to be the Super Nations Cup champions for 2012. But when I say that, the USA were down three goals against Hong Kong, China in the semi-final with only two and a half minutes to go. And they scored two, uh, they scored three goals to make it all square so it's up now to uh, well USA make some horse changes vital for them and uh, you see the ambassador for Argentina Gustavo Martino they're celebrating his country's goal a lot of the junior players from the United States down there helping out today learning a bit about tactics and grooming Because Raja also taking the opportunity to change a horse. So with a minute and five seconds left, Argentina nine, USA seven. Balls on the halfway mark. Sandy Zanardi's there, having something to say about. Uh, one of the plays. So everybody's back in the lineup. Cody Forsyth just calling him to give you a bit of space. Now he puts the ball in. It's caught up amongst the number twos. Jeff Hall trying to get to it. Araja gets, no, he can't. Campson gets the backhand shot. Pushes it down on the attack for the USA. Turned around there by Ambrosio. Um, La Placette can't pick it up, but Araja does. Doesn't get any length on the ball, so it's left sitting there now for Rowe to hit the ball, and the whistle blows. So, uh, with about three quarters of a minute left. USA get a free hit. Mike Azzaro. 
to take it. He won't waste any time with this. He pushes it down, lofts it right down, and Chris Campson's able to trap that one, brings it across in front of goal, and he'll tap it through, and it's nine goals to eight. Well, they did it last time. They've still got half a minute left in this chucker, and if they do, we'll see an extra one. So in the event that we've got a tie, we'll see some more polo. But uh, here was Chris Campson. Kept his cool here, didn't try and do anything smart, just had the horse in protecting the ball, ran it forward, he had the line, he got the ball, he put it through the goal. So, out it comes, on the Argentine side again. Marcus Araja backs it, helped on its way by Ambrugio, but picked up there by Mason Rowe, oh no, nice near side shot, Sandy Bernardi's that got them out of trouble. He puts it out over the sideline, there goes the siren, and that's the end of the game. Congratulations, Argentina, how exciting Okay. Yes, that's the end of the game. The final siren rings, and so Argentina by the narrowest possible margin. A game like this, one goal win by nine goals to eight. And players congratulating one another. The USA probably a little disappointed that they weren't able to get a few of those penalties earlier in the game because just one of those would have made it equal. Two of them would have given it to them. Argentina, I think, only missed two penalties. Anyway, it's a very, very good victory for Argentina in a terrific, tough, hard-fought game. Lots of galloping, lots of good goals scored. And uh, congratulations to both these teams. North and South America playing off for the Super Nations Cup 2012. Umpire Cody Forsyth. for the trophies played for at the Super Nations. Our distinguished guests to appreciate these exciting games and also Tianjin, witness this important Polish. moment, the awarding. 尊敬的各位来宾,现场亲爱的观众朋友们,大家下午好,欢迎各位来到我们今天带给您的富国高银超级国家杯2012的颁奖典礼。我是今天的主持人马瑶,非常荣幸能够跟在座的各位贵宾朋友共同在这里见证精彩的马球赛事,以及接下来即将带给您的精彩环节,我们期待已久的颁奖典礼。now, first of all, I suggest a warm applause for all our players from four teams. They did a very wonderful job. So there's the trophy, we talked about it earlier, so now to relax, oh, by, uh, first let's the traditional go bars of China. Beautiful Chinese song Jasmine by Buenos Aires Opera Troupe. Please, now me see Jang Shang Sing Chu, Buenos Aires Yishu Tuan, we will be able to show Jing Bian the Jung Bo Ming Go, Mo Li Hua, Jang Shang Huan Ying. So, a troupe of opera singers from Buenos Aires, quite appropriately, with Argentina winning this game. And uh, they've been entertaining the patrons here at the Metropolitan Polo Club right through the week. Yeah. 
请大家一起跟我们一起吟唱。Thank you, thank you, Buenos Aires Art Troupe, to bring us such a beautiful Chinese song, Jasmine. 谢谢布宜诺斯艾利斯艺术团，用他们的歌声为我们演绎了这样一首非常优美又动听的中国传统民歌《茉莉花》。谢谢各位。Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup 2012 now officially begins. 那接下来，我们就正式的进入到我们今天带给您的富国高银超级国家杯二零一二颁奖环节。To start with, let's welcome Mr. Eduardo Juan Huego, FIP Chairman, to deliver a speech first, please. 我们一起掌声欢迎 FIP 主席 Huego 先生为今天的颁奖典礼致辞，有请。Eduardo Huego is the current president of the Federation International of Polo, the controlling body for polo and the sport around the world. And uh, he will now welcome the players and the teams for this. Dear friends in polo, we have come to the end of the 2012 Super Nations Cup and also the Under-16 tournament. Congratulations to the winners today and also to both teams for such a wonderful performance. The Federation of International Polo is very happy to be here to celebrate the Chinese National Day with this event. Our deepest gratitude to the wonderful people in China. We are grateful for the love and support you have given to the sport of polo. I want to say well done to the players, to all the players, for your excellent performance in and out of the field, and for the great sportsmanship thrown, shown throughout the tournament. Whatever the final results have, may have been, you are all winners in your own right. And thank you to all who have contributed to the sporting success. The umpires, stewards, tournament director, horse master, and all those who have worked hard behind the scenes, like grooms, assistants, and many more. With the growth of polo in China, we look forward to more polo-related developments and in this beautiful country. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huego. Thank you, Mr. Huego, for your excellent speech. So, dear friends here, on this occasion, we would like to present a token of appreciation to many friends besides our players. First, we would like to show our appreciation to the two commentators whose voice we are so familiar with these five days. Let's welcome Mr. Kenneth Lau and Tony Coppola, and also may I invite Mr. Huang Weimian, Deputy Director of Tianjin Sports Bureau, Tianjin Sports Bureau. 局长黄维勉先生，有请。
我们感谢两位裁判员这五天来带来的辛勤的解说，哦，这两位解说员，我们这五天来给我们带来的精彩的解说。那接下来我们就要为了向两位解说员表达谢意，我们也请天津体育局的黄局长为两位送上礼品，以示谢意。感谢他们五天带来的精彩也解说，请三位一同合影。Let's take a picture together. Thank you again. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Kenneth, for your very wonderful commentation these five days. Yeah, 谢谢黄局长，谢谢。Joe, who is the Chinese language commentator here for Paulo in the China and Hong Kong? And the next one of the important role in a tournament, we would like to present a token of appreciation to our umpires. Mr. Peter Wright, Mr. Ricardo Daniel Bodo, and Mr. Cody Forsyth. May I invite Mr. Marcos Urenga, FIP founder, to our stage to present the gift. 那接下来也是我们本次比赛中非常重要的一个角色，我们要向他们表达谢意。那就是我们三位杰出的裁判，有请三位登场。同时，我们也请出 FIB 创始人 Yoringa 先生为三位颁奖。Now let me invite all our three umpires to our stage, please. Mr. Peter Wright, Mr. Ricardo Daniel Bodo, and Mr. Cody Forsyth. Thank you. Please. Polo Federation, 1982, and he is now the presenting member of the Super Nations Cup for 2012. Jara Pan, Peter Wright on the left, Daniel Badu in the centre, and Cody Forsyth on the right. Thank you. Okay, let's take a photo together, please. Okay, a special thank you again to our umpires. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Yoringa. Please. And a host of cameras. 谢谢三位裁判，也谢谢我们的颁奖嘉宾 Yoringa 先生。And the next, we will present a token of appreciation to our tournament director, Mr. Peter Abishganadan, and horse master, Mr. Benjamin Araya. Also, may I invite Mr. Shen Jiatong, Vice Secretary of Tianjin Municipal Government, to our stage to present the gift. Now, we will invite the Tianjin State Government Secretary, Mr. Shen Jiatong, to the stage to present the gift. Now, we will invite the Tianjin State Government Secretary, Mr. 同时，也让我们借此机会感谢本次竞赛总监 Peter Abishgala 等先生和马术大师 Benjamin Araya 先生。有请两位 ，please。Will send a memento forwarding to Mr. Peter Abishgala. 好，请沈秘书长为我们两位。Tournament manager, tournament controller here. 一份奖品也是代表着我们对两位的一份感谢。Horse master, veterinarian, uh, a big job behind the scenes these two men do. Um, Peter has to ensure that all the rules of the Federation International Polo are abided by and that the umpires make their decisions in accordance with those rules. Okay, thank you. Thank you again to our tournament to director and our horse master. Thank you. 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 Um, a hundred horses ready okay, now, without every day further ado, for trials may and I invite Mr. Harvey so, Lee, uh, Vice Chairman of Golden Real Estate Financial Holdings Limited. Best Pony. And the best pony, the prize goes to the best the pony, pony Montana from the team Argentina. Please let's welcome the pony Montana and his groomer team.
我们一起掌声欢迎最佳马匹奖的得奖者，来自阿根廷队的马匹蒙塔纳和他的驯马师 Tim 一起来到舞台前。有请李主席为我们的最佳马匹奖的得主颁发奖项。That fourth tracker win, um, Argentina were able to hang in and take that three-goal lead at halftime. So that was the tackle one. Here we go in these so games. Not only our players, but also the, the cute ponies, ponies have made great effort. So let's give a warm applause to our best pony, Montana. And his groomer team. Thank you, guys. Let's take a picture together, please. Well, Big staff and why there are more than 220 horses involved in the Metropolitan Polo Club. Um, there are 200. Four, I think, polo ponies, and then there are about another. Oh, uh, uh, thank you again. Thank you, Montana 16, team. Uh, general Cici, riding Cici. horses for children and things. So maintenance of these horses right through the uh, year okay, particularly because the Snow the Polo World Cup was played here in February very important and so we had to have horses right in the middle the of winter which is normally when they're resting and then to bring them back here in the autumn for the Polo has been leading up to this Super Asian Cup now may I invite Mr. Richard Cutley over to the podium please Mr. Richard Cutley now may I invite Mr. Richard Cutley FIP Council and, uh, member to our stage to present the award, please. Let us welcome the FIP Member of the Council, Pan Liu, to the stage. We will give him the award. He is speaking to the a lot about horsemanship. And the most valuable player, the prize goes to Team United States America's player, Mike Azaro. Congratulations to Mike. The, uh, Please. Award for the most valuable player. Let's welcome Mike Azaro to our stage. We congratulate the most valuable player of the Mike Azaro. Mike Azaro, the number four, this great ambassador for polo. He's been right at the top of this game now for the last number four. This great ambassador for polo. He's been right at the top of this game now for a couple of decades. And, uh, and most appropriately, Richard Lafleur, who's, um, who's going to present it to him because he is the uh, president-elect. Of Pip, so he will probably and be the next president of Mr. Federation Richard International Polo. Polo. He is also the president of the United States Polo Association. So very appropriate that he is presenting this prize to Mike Azaro, even though he wasn't on the winning team. Mike Azaro, congratulations again. Thank you, Mr. Richard Khalil. 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 Thank you, Mr.
and may I have the honor to invite Mr. Kukun Danvers again to our stage. Since now it's time to present the medal for the second runner up. 那接下来呢，我们还是要请 Kukun Danvers 先生为我们颁发本次比赛的季军奖。And the prize goes to Team Hong Kong China. Congratulations to Hong Kong China. Let's welcome all the players and their team manager to our stage, please. 掌声恭喜获得本次第三名，也是季军得主中国香港队。我们欢迎中国香港队的每一名球员，还有他们的球队经理来到舞台上。And the third place team, the home side, Hong Kong China. Congratulations to all the players and the team manager. Roland Wong, John Fisher, just going down by the narrowest of margins in a penalty shootout in the semi-finals here against. Congratulations to you guys. The USA, and uh, so not in the final, but um, certainly in the playoffs for third and fourth, they were victorious, and so hung on to third position. So pretty good effort by the local team to win the uh, Snow Polo World Cup out of 12 teams, and then out of four selected teams of 24 goals here to, to run to. Congratulations to Hong Kong China! 再次用掌声恭喜中国香港队，谢谢他们的精彩表现，获得了本次比赛的季军。Now may I invite your team to the stage, please? And Chris McKenzie. 我们也要谢谢颁奖嘉宾 Roland Wong, one of the directors of the Golden, one of the managers of the Golden Group, with that Hong Kong side. Now next. May I have the honor to invite Ms. Zhang Junfeng, Vice Mayor of Tianjin City, to the stage present the medal for the first runner-up. Let's meet 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 This is the vice mayor. And the prize goes to the team United States of America. And the runners up. Congratulations to the team United States of America. The Super Nations Trophy 2012. Let's welcome all the players and their team manager. Congratulations to you, Mr. Richard Palio. Mike. Azaro. Number one, Mason Rowe. Mason Rowe. Chris Campson. Number three, and Jeffrey Ford. Jeff Paul. And to the back, Mike Azaro. We also ask Zhang Shijiang, who has won the Yaa Jun of the United States of America, and the team manager. Again, congratulations to Team United States of America. 再次用掌声恭喜美国队获得了此次富国高银超级国家杯的第二枚亚军得主。恭喜 ！Thank you. Congratulations to you. 张市长，请留步。张市长，请您留步，因为接下来呢，还要请张市长为我们的冠军得主颁发奖牌。Now it's time to present the award to the first prize, the champion, and the prize goes to Team Argentina. Congratulations to the Team Argentina, the championship. Let's welcome all the players. So the victorious Argentinian team coming on stage now. They won it by a goal, but they were out there in front for a good uh, most of the game. And as they stand there now, it's Juan Ambrosio. Santi. And also here. 
we have a very special guest who would like to invite His Excellency, and, uh, Mr. Gustavo A. Martina, Ambassador of the Republic of Argentina, to our stage well, to take a photograph with, with our champion team. Argentina team, please. Let me give you a warm welcome. Argentine Republic of Argentina, Gustavo Martino, Mr. President, and our champion team, the Argentine team. Welcome. Now the Republic of Argentina comes on stage to be photographed with the Victorian team from his country, Argentina. Okay, dear ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm applause to our champion team, Argentina team. 再次用掌声，恭喜我们的冠军得主阿根廷队，恭喜他们夺冠。然后谢谢张市长 ，Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, please take your seat. Thank you. Now, may I invite you guys move a step forward, one step forward, please, since we have a very special gift for all out of you. And then we have got Moe Hennessy Diageo Company Limited sponsoring the Ver Clico Champagnes as gifts to our teams. May I invite Mrs. Christina Liang, Marketing Director of Wines and Champagne, to present to our teams. 那接下来我们就有请明月轩尼诗香槟和葡萄酒系列品牌市场董事梁晶女士为我们的获胜队伍颁发凯歌黄牌香槟，有请。So the England team there, Ali. Got more. Mark Tomlinson, James Byam, James Harper, USA team. Mason Rowe, Chris Campson, Mike Arauzzo, Zaro, and. 那在这里呢，也要感谢我们的赞助商凯歌香槟，它是始于一七七二年。凯歌香槟与马球运动也有着不解之缘，是品质、创新、创意与华贵的代名词，是生活艺术的完美象征。也感谢赞助商凯歌香槟在本次比赛中对我们的支持和赞助。所有的队员送上了一份礼品，是为我们本次运动的所有队员的一份特制的明月香槟。那在这儿 ，Let's take a photo together。我们也请梁晶女士和所有的队员一同合影。Guys, since you all have a champagne in your hand, so on behalf of FIP, we would like to thank China. How about cheers, China, to China and to Argentina team. Thank you very much, China. Three cheers for China, all of you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. 谢谢，我们要谢谢梁晶女士。Thank you, Christina Liang. 谢谢梁晶女士。And finally. Dear ladies and gentlemen, may I invite Mr. Eduardo Juan Huego, FIP Chairman, and Mr. Pan Su Tong, Chairman of Golden Group. 有请 FIP 主席 Huego 先生和高云集团主席潘苏通先生一同上台来为我们的冠军队颁发奖杯。Now let me invite Mr. Huego and Mr. Pan Su Tong. To present the Fortune Heights Super Nations Cup trophy to the winning team, Team Argentina. 好，请两位一起为我们的冠军队颁发奖杯。So now the president of the FIP and Mr. Pan Sutong, chairman of the Golden Group, 
，再次用掌声恭喜冠军队 ，Argentina！Congratulations to the team，Argentina the champion，and awesome applause for all the players, all the teams. You did a very wonderful job, and thank you. You made such great effort in the past five days. 好，在我们冠军的奖杯声中，在我们激烈的音乐声中，让我们一起用掌声邀请所有的贵宾一同上台来，和我们的冠军队和其他的三个队伍一同合影。Now let's let's invite all the guests of honor to our stage to take a group photograph with all our team. Let's invite all the guests of honor to our stage.